CEO of Solstein Capital uh, to join the conversation uh, as well. Nadine, I'll come to you first just uh, on, on your take as we stand. One trading day uh, left of the year, a little bit of a pullback, but ultimately it's been a resoundingly strong finish to the year. December up 5% or so for, for the Dow and S&P. You're right, Wilfred. And as I wrote in the, some notes this morning to the crew, um, if you had an up day today, I thought of it as a gift. Options were attractively priced. We put on hedges. We trimmed some high beta positions and bought into some bond-like securities. Yesterday, I was buying treasuries. Today, I do the Rust Plus H, so real estate, utilities, staples, telecom, healthcare. So looking to have a little bit more defensiveness in the portfolio, um, especially heading into the new year. We don't get a lot of people, Nadine, coming on here and saying they're buying treasuries. <laughs> Everybody hates treasuries. Low yields, <laughs> rates are going higher, inflation is high. Why are you adding? Sure. So what you have to look at is what's happening next year first from a macroeconomic perspective, Sarah. And what's going to happen is the growth of GDP is going to decelerate. And we believe the math also is going to show that the growth of inflation is going to decelerate. And the things that do well in that scenario, so the Fed's not going to be able to continually hike up rates because it won't have the, the data behind it to support it, is that Treasuries do well, more safety securities do well. So you might have a couple of months where, again, you can have tech run, you can have other positions run, but heading into new year, we do want to have a little bit more defensiveness in the portfolio before everyone else figures that out. Mike, uh, looking at the sort of performance year to date, we've talked about this all this week, the lack of pullbacks uh, and, and the extent of the gains. It's not just this year, though. It, it's three years now of pretty extraordinary gains. Right. Uh, you basically had total returns of, you know, 19 percent last year after that big pullback uh, around COVID. Uh, the prior year uh, was up to 30 percent as well. And now you're going to push 30 percent this year. So uh, you've doubled in three years. Uh, it's, it's obviously uh, a fairly rare streak to have three consecutive years of that level of return. We did it in the late 90s. If you look forward, it's almost never the prelude to a really bad year. Uh, but sometimes you are going to have something that's a little bit more uh, more challenging in terms of the pace and the rhythm of, of how the market flows. Uh, and, you know, obviously below the surface, we keep talking about how even though we got no major index level correction, almost every stock in the market really did uh, have a, a rough patch out there. So I think that you could kind of balance those things out and say uh, it's probably a little too aggressive to say we're going up another 30 percent next year. Uh, but, you know, it, it tends to be more likely that uh, that you're up than down even after you've had a nice run like this. Nadine, of all the bond-like defensive sectors out there, utilities, consumer staples, healthcare, they're all doing very well this month for December, but they've all underperformed for 2021. Which is your favorite for next year and why? Sure. Well, if you make me trade today, I'd say wait a little bit because a lot of things were over, overbought today. But we really like real estate. But again, pay attention to leverage. So you want real estate companies maybe that are a little less leverage or you could go with an etf like the xlre you know a month ago I was trading at a really high implied volatility premium what does that mean people were paying a ton up for protection but now it's at a discount so i would like to see the xlre closer to the 4950 level our trading range is that until about 5225 but it is, as you mentioned sarah bullish short term bullish intermediate term and those type of positions tend to do very well when rates may decline because of decelerating inflation and decelerating growth. And as you said, they weren't huge winners in the first part of the year, but we expect the gains to extend into 2022. Nadine, a lot of people uh, w piling into energy at the moment with, with various uh, crises pushing oil prices higher as well. W what are you doing in that sector? We trimmed this week, so um, it's had a big bounce back after the Omicron scare, Wilfred. But we still see oil volatility. So if you look at the OVX, you know, it's hovering over 40. It's not over 50 anymore, but it's over 40. You have to be a little bit careful. And, you know, it's got maybe 1.2 upside to downside right now, but that's kind of a fair fight. So if you've made some money in the short term, we think it is prudent to take a little bit off the table. 
Um, Omicron, yes, it may delay reopening a little bit, but everyone knows this story. So unless you have some secrets off of what is going to really push energy prices up further from now, we take it as a gift and say trim some of those positions. Nadine Terman, thank you for joining us. Some, some contrarian <laughs> calls there. We appreciate it.